Hey everyone, it's Brad from DevOps Journey, and today we're going to have a look at how to send commands and run processes in Python. If you're just starting out with Python, then this is going to be a really great tutorial for you, as being able to send commands and interact with subprocesses is a really important skill to have. As always, I've included the code for this tutorial in the description below, but please stick around as I do give some good tips and tricks on the subprocess module. Anyways, let's jump into the code and get started. All right, so the quick and dirty way of sending a command in Python is to go import OS and then OS system and then type in the command name. So we'll put ls-l. And you can see that this ran the command and returned the output. This is a very simplified way of running a command in Python, but it's not the recommended way. Using os.system to run commands is very limited in its functionality. The proper way is to use a module called subprocess. And using the subprocess module isn't too difficult, so I'm going to hop into Visual Studio Code and show you just how easy it is so you can start using the subprocess module to run your commands. All right, so I have some code up on the screen. The first line is just importing the inspect command so we can view the object. This isn't required for your script. What's actually required is to import subprocess and then doing a subprocess.run command. So we can see I'm running this subprocess.run and it's returning it to the variable results. And I have a couple parameters set here. So the first one is the actual command itself. One thing you may notice is it's taking in a list. So this is your command and it's just broken up between the actual command and its arguments. So I'm doing an ls and the arguments for that is dash l. If my command took in multiple parameters, then I would add them as additional items in the list. And I'll show that off later as I run a more complicated command, but this is the basic syntax. The next thing is the standard out and standard error. So we're taking our standard output. This is the output that the command returns and we're sending it to subprocess.pipe and we're doing the same with standard error. So this is basically just saying send the standard output into the object that is returned and that object is going to be in this results variable. So if we want to see the standard output, all we would need to do is go result.standardout. And if we wanted to see the standard error, we would go result.standarderror. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this into our Python shell and have a look at the results we get. So I'll copy this in and paste it. And we can see we go results and it returns this object. I'm going to use this inspect command on the results just to show it off a little nicer. So I'll go inspect and then results. So we can see four different attributes here. First, we can see the arguments that were sent. So this was basically the command that we sent. We have the return code, so it returns zero. This means our command completed. If this returned anything other than zero, then we know that the command ran into an error. So our output is underneath standard output, and if there was an error, it would be underneath standard error. So let's go ahead and print out our standard output to the Python console. So I'll go results.standardout. So you can see that this is a bytes level object, so it doesn't really print out nicely. There's actually two ways that you can get around this, and I'm going to show them both. So the first one is to take this output and manually decode it. So all you need to do to do that is go dot decode and then set what you want to decode it to. I'm going to say UTF-8. And we actually need to run this through print statement to have it print onto new lines. So you can see that prints it out just like you would see in the command line or your shell. Now, an easier way to do this than manually decoding the output is to actually just add an argument up here and go text equals true. And this is basically going to manually decode it for you as text. So you don't have to work with these byte level objects. So I'm going to take this, paste it in, and then I'll go print results.standardout and you can see that it printed it out nicely without having to decode it. All right, so another thing you can do with the subprocess module is you don't need to send your standard output to the subprocess.pipe. You can send it anywhere you want to. 
So one thing that I like to do sometimes is send my standard output to a file. So it's very simple to do. You just open up a file like you would in any Python script and then you send the standard output to it. So I'm going to say with open out dot text write as f and then I'm going to make sure this is indented and then I'm going to take the standard out and then I'm going to say go to the variable f which is my file. So if I take this and then put it in you can see it generated this out dot text and my output is there. So it's a very simple yet powerful thing that you can do with the subprocess module. All right, so there's one more thing that I want to touch on with the subprocess module, and it's an important thing, and it occurs when you run a command that takes some time to run and process and complete. If you use the subprocess.run command, it's going to sit there and wait until the command is complete. So the command we've been using in this example is to list the directory. Obviously that one returns right away, so there's no real lag time. But if I were to run a command that takes five to 10 seconds to complete, we'd be sitting there waiting for the command. So I'm gonna go ahead and illustrate that with a ping command here. So I'll paste it in. So I'm doing ping dash n 10 google.com. Basically this is gonna send 10 pings off to google.com. So I'm gonna take this and paste it in and I'm getting an error because I'm sending my standard out to file let's go ahead and fix that okay that's been fixed let me just fix this line length as well and we have it here so let's take this and paste it in and you can see that we're sitting here waiting for the ping command to complete. It's probably going to take about 10 seconds to send off 10 pings to Google. So it's completed. And now if I go results, I can see that it returns it. Now, obviously, a few seconds for a ping command to run isn't that big of a deal, but sometimes you're going to be running a command that may take a few minutes to run, and you don't want your Python script sitting there waiting for the system to return the command. You may want to run that process in parallel while your Python script goes on and does other things. So what you can do here is instead of doing a subprocess.run, you can do a subprocess.popen. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to spawn the process and then Python's going to move on and do other things. Okay, so to switch this off to popen is actually quite simple. All we need to do is change this subprocess.run to subprocess.popen. And then I'm going to add two additional lines of code here. So this first one is results.pull. This is basically the way that you can check on the subprocess that is being spawned with popen. And it's going to either return none, which means the subprocess is still running, or it's going to return the return code, either zero for the command is completed or a number if there was an error. So basically to summarize, if this returns none, then the subprocess is still running. If it returns a number, then we're ready to take in the results. So once results.pull returns a number, then we're going to do a results.communicate and then take in the standard out and standard error. So let's go ahead and start running this. So we'll take this and we'll paste it in. And I'll just copy this in and go results.pull. You can see it hasn't returned anything yet. And now it's returned zero. So I know the command completed successfully and it's done. So now we're ready to put this in. And now if I do a standard out, you can see the results of the command. And again, if you want to print it out nicely, we'll just go print and we'll go standard out. So I ran the command successfully and I still had access to the Python shell. So I'd be able to do other things within my Python script while just pulling this. And then once it returned a number value, then I could collect in the output. 
So that's all I have for this video. If you found the video helpful at all, go ahead and hit that like button to help get this video out to other Python engineers. If you're looking to learn more about Python DevOps or just further your career in IT, then go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel.